I'd like to show you how to complete the study guides for this class so that you have a little guidance before you have to do your first one. You're also welcome, of course, to refer back to this tutorial anytime you need it. So the first thing I recommend you do is to create a folder on your computer that's specifically for this class. So if you go in, and of course I'm on a Mac, your computer may look different, but if you go in and say, okay, this is for... Let me get a new folder here for my EDSC 3000 class. There we go. I've made a little folder for this. That way you can save everything you do for this class in that folder. It'll be really easy to find. And like I've said in the class materials, we're going to have study guides for every lesson. You've got key assignments for this class. It's going to start piling up. So this will be just a great way to keep everything in one place. All right, so once you've created a folder on your computer and you get into the lesson materials, in every lesson you'll have at least one study guide. So here's an example where it says download the human brain study guide and save it to your folder. So all you have to do is click on that link and that'll start the download of that file. And then if you open the file, and again your processes may be slightly different depending on what type of computer you're using. But if you open that file, just make sure that it gets saved now to the folder that you created. So I'm going to go ahead and save that to my documents and to that EDSC 3000 folder. All right, so once I've got this all saved, now I can go through and start completing this study guide. The first thing to notice is that I've supplied some objectives for you right here. These are the objectives from the lesson. You do not have to respond to these if you don't want to. Uh, they are simply to kind of guide you and set the right tone for what you're supposed to be learning. Then as you go through the study guide, you'll notice a list of key terms. And what I've tried to do for you here is to whittle down the number of terms that you have to learn. Uh, as we go through the class, you'll notice that the book goes a bit crazy with the number of bolded words. And that can be a little overwhelming. So in many cases, I've tried to narrow it down. I've also occasionally added a few terms that are not in the text that I feel are important for you to know. And in those cases, I'll either provide resources or definitions online for you, or you're welcome to go out and do a web search. All right, so as we scroll past the key terms, I'm just going to give you an overview here first. Sometimes I'll give you diagrams and stuff to label. The next section is the summary. Okay, so don't skip this part. There is a summary, and I'll go over that in a minute. And then I'll also give you some application questions where you go in and actually think about what you've learned and how you can apply it. All right, so let's scroll back up now that you have your overview. And let's talk about the key terms. Now, I always give you resources or page numbers uh, in the text to give you definitions for these terms. So as you're reading, start writing down definitions. Now I strongly recommend that you write these definitions in your own words. If you just write down what's in the text, it's not going to make a ton of sense to you. So try to, try to come up with your own definition, your own way of thinking about the term. I also recommend that you try to think of an example from your own life of this term. Now in this particular study guide, that's going to be a little bit tough uh, because these are all structures in the human brain. But as we get into the course a little bit, it'll really benefit you if you can think of an example from your own life of whatever the term is talking about. And then also try to think of a way to apply this information in your future classroom. So if you can do those three things with each term, define it in your own words, think of an example from your own life, and then apply it to your future classroom, you're really going to be in good shape. Then as we scroll down, once you're all done with the readings and online stuff, write a, just a brief three to five sentence summary. What that does is it causes your brain to transform the information a little bit and you're going to understand and retain it better. The last part of the application questions, and I really do want you to be specific and detailed in these responses. This is where we take those abstract concepts and really apply them to our lives and to the classroom. And so take a few minutes on these and really do your best on them. When you're done with all of this, save the file again to your folder and upload it in Canvas, and that's it.